Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different and I'm here today in my new setup in Australia as you can see and I thought given that season 16 of Drag Race US has recently been announced I thought it'd be fun if I would go through all of the other seasons and rank them in terms of my favourites from least favourite to favourite of all the seasons. So I'm going to be talking about just Drag Race US and just the regular season, so no All-Stars, no Internationals, and I'll just be going through giving my opinion on where they fall in the ranking. And also just to quickly say, this is just my opinion and this is in no way like mean things towards the Queens or anything, so please don't send any hate, this is just my opinion and it's just supposed to be a fun video, it's not the Queen's fault, a lot of the stuff I'll talk about will be pretty production is the reason as to why I'm giving it the rank that I have. And so with that, let's get started. Okay, so in position 15, I'm going to put season one. So the reason for this is because although I think the cast of Queens was really fun and it's where Drag Race all began, I do think obviously when you look back on it, you can tell that there were some low budget issues. Uh, it was written somewhere that it was actually filmed in RuPaul's garage, the runway and everything, which is why it was such a small, narrow runway because they didn't have much room and things. Also, there was the blurriness on the camera, which made it just feel a bit like I was watching it through some weird lens or something. And in general, although it was a really fun season, I think Drag Race was just finding its footing. It didn't quite know where it was yet, so some of the challenges were a bit odd. Overall, it was fun, but unfortunately, I will, for those reasons, have to put it in 15th place. So in 14th place, I'm putting season 10. It's actually one of the slightly newer seasons. And actually, I think this the cast of Queens was great. And I think the winner, Aquaria, was completely deserved. The reason why I'm putting it on this position in the list is just because I felt like some of the challenges in that season just didn't quite hit the mark for me. Uh, for example, the breast world. I still think about that now. I have no idea what that challenge was. Maybe someone can tell me if they understood the reference, but there were just a few challenges on that season that I didn't get. The queens were super interesting. I thought there was enough drama and everything, but overall I felt like probably because season nine had happened just before it and season nine was a really good season. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But I think because they'd come off the back of season nine, season 10 just felt a little bit like quite, not quite at the same level that nine was. So unfortunately, I'm having to put season 10 in 14th position. So in 13th position, we have season 13. Again, this is one of the newer ones. The reason I'm putting it on this position in the list is because I really thought that the queens were messed over a bit with the first episode lip sync, and then there was that pork chop loading dock, and then actually no one got eliminated, and they did this weird sort of split premiere, but not quite. I didn't quite get it. I didn't like that format. I felt like it did a disservice to the queens. So overall, I just didn't enjoy it for that particular reason. I also felt like there was quite a lot of riggery in season 13. Uh, I know I'll probably sound like Drag Detective. Um, if you do want to watch some riggery videos, make sure you go and check out Drag Detective's video on that because they're really interesting. But there were a few challenges where I felt like there was some favoritism with certain queens winning when they shouldn't have won probably. Uh, I also feel like, although I loved Candy Muse, I thought she was the drama, she was everything in that season. I do feel like the double save between her and Simone in the lip sync felt just a little bit forced. Uh, I, I see why Candy stayed because she's incredible, but the whole double save just felt a little bit weird to me. I also felt like Tina Burner didn't get the props that she should and she got some weird critiques. We also had queens like Utica, who I don't think got, for example, in the ball when she made that amazing sleeping bag outfit and didn't win. To me, that just felt like a bit of a miss. So overall, season 13, unfortunately, has to go position 13. So next in position 12, we have season two. Now, the reason I'm putting it here is because I think it was still a really good season. I think there was a lot of drama and I did quite like the earlier seasons because they felt a little bit more authentic because the queens weren't as worried about what they were saying because of social media backlash, which I totally understand, but it felt very uh, authentic. 
But I think season two kind of had the same issue that season one did, that it was still finding its footing. Amazing queens, but just some of the challenges looking back on them were just maybe slightly didn't hit the mark and felt it still felt like the show was trying to find what it really was very much modeled after something like America's Next Top Model, which was good, but there were just a lot of design challenges uh, didn't, and it just didn't quite hit the mark for me. It feels like watching an older season, but still great queens, but unfortunately has to go in this position for that reason. So in position 11, we have season three. Again, I know I sound like a broken record, but I feel like these first three seasons were just finding their feet. The show didn't quite know what it was. I thought Raja was an amazing winner and she brought the fashion. I feel like she really elevated what Drag Race fashion was. And I think it was an amazing season for that reason. And there again was a lot of drama and you had interesting things like Shangela returning to the competition, which had never happened before. But again, the show just didn't quite feel like the Drag Race we know now. It didn't quite have the same polish and everything. So I think looking back on it, it's entertaining, but I I have to put it in this position. So in 10th position, we have season 11. The reason I put this one here is because I feel like although the season was really good, I thought the cast of Queens was really interesting, but it just felt to me like there was a bit of a, an odd, if you pardon the pun, storyline with the winner, Evie Oddly. I felt like they were trying to show her as being this underdog, but to me, I feel like it was quite obvious she was going to win from the edit. I think she deserved her win. She's incredibly talented, but I just felt like the editing was telling a different story to what we were actually seeing. I also felt like a couple of the challenges were a bit weird. Also, when I think back to season 11, there isn't necessarily a massively memorable moment that it sticks out in my mind for being from that season. And so ultimately, that's why I'm having to put it in this position because it just doesn't feel that memorable to me. So next in ninth position, we have season 14. And with this season, I feel like it was good. It was enjoyable. It really did elevate fashion on Drag Race to a new level because we had so many fashion queens, you know, people like Willow Pill, who obviously went on to win. She really had this like quirkiness and amazing fashion. I really enjoyed that element of it. The reason it's on this position in the list is I just feel like the season went on for a very long time. Uh, there were so many non-eliminations. The first two queens, you know, Orion and Daya, came back to the competition, which to me just felt a little bit unnecessary. I liked those queens. I just didn't feel like their eliminations really meant anything if you're just going to bring people back straight away. Also, I think the golden chocolate bar thing just felt very forced and didn't feel very natural. And it just so happened that Bosco got it, who was sort of the last queen almost to be eliminated before the finale. It just felt a little bit planned and didn't feel that authentic because if the queen, let's say June Jambalaya had got it and she was eliminated first and then for the rest of the season, the chocolate bar thing would be meaningless. So it did feel very planned by production. So for me, unfortunately, there was also just no drama in the season. The queens really were all best friends, which is great, but we do say it's not RuPaul's best friends race and the drama that was there didn't necessarily feel that big. So overall, unfortunately, it just didn't quite hit the mark for me. So it's going in this position. Okay, so in eighth position, we have the most recent season, which is season 15. The reason I'm putting it here is because I think the shorter episodes really, really detracted from the season and the enjoyment. It was just not good. It felt very, very forced. There were a lot of queens, 16, I believe. And to get all of those into 40 minute episodes, not that that's the Queen's fault, but I think that was a massive mistake on the part of the production team or whoever may, or the network, whoever makes that decision. And I think the fact that they've now released the longer episodes shows that there was obviously such backlash against it. And obviously that's not the Queen's fault, but unfortunately it did take away some of the enjoyment of the season when I originally watched it. But having watched it again, I really liked the Queen's. I felt like there were some Queen's like, Mistress Isabel Brooks and Lucy LaDuca, who gave us some amazing moments. Lux Noir London had amazing fashion. And then obviously Sasha Colby, to me, was the clear winner was and, and was the winner. But I feel like, obviously, to me, it was so obvious that Sasha was going to win. Anitra was a great alternate, but I just couldn't see her winning over Sasha because... 
like they said in the who should go home tonight and why they all said this is like the Sasha Colby meet and greet and it did feel a little bit like that so I think ultimately that did take away some of the enjoyment but I think there was enough drama and interesting fashion choices and there was obviously uh, sugar and spice twins it was enough to keep the season a bit interesting which is why it's going in this position so in seventh position we have season eight I really enjoyed this season, although it was a very short season. I believe it's one of the shortest ones there ever has been. I believe it's also one of the smallest casts there's ever been. So it did feel maybe a little bit short and rushed, but I really loved the cast. I thought they were all really entertaining. Bob the Drag Queen is one of my favorite queens ever and was the clear winner. I thought there were some really interesting challenges, although it was quite heavy on the sort of design and acting. But I thought there was a really good season. And I also loved the top three. I thought Bob, Naomi and Kim Chi each represented something different. It wasn't just three fashion queens or three comedy queens or three dancing queens. They all had something interesting to add. And I thought it was just a really cool top three, which is why this season is in the position that it is. So in position six, we have season seven, controversially perhaps for some. I felt like a lot of people like to poop on this season and say nasty things about it. And for a long time, it was considered to be one of the weaker seasons because the queens perhaps were a lot more on the fashion side of it and not as much maybe personality side. But I think looking back on the season, it really did have a shift of fashion on Drag Race and what that meant. And I think queens like Miss Fame really brought in a different element. Obviously, then you had comedy queens like Ginger Minj, obviously Violet Chachki. And then we also have some amazing queens that came from the season like Trixie and Katia, who have become arguably the most famous queens ever from Drag Race. And I feel like all of, if you look at the cast of season seven, Pretty much all of the queens have gone on to have really great careers. And I feel it was a very overlooked season during its run. And I think only now, looking back on it, people are kind of appreciating it a bit more. So for me, it was a really enjoyable season. And I think it gave us one of the most iconic moments with Pearl, do I have something on my face? So for me, it's going in this position. So in fifth position, we have season 12. I really enjoyed this season. And I think despite the setback of obviously Sherry Pie being edited out, I feel like that didn't necessarily too much damage the actual narrative of the story of the season. And I feel like the queens were just really interesting. We had quite a few interesting storylines. Queens like Heidi and Closet, I loved. And I loved that she was that kind of she her struggles of you know maybe not having as much money as some of the other queens really was interesting to me i thought although the finale unfortunately because of covid they had to do it over zoom it did detract slightly from the season but i felt like the three queens that had to do those lip syncs and the performances were really good. Jada was an incredible winner and i think she's really carried that winner's torch beautifully and I think she definitely deserved it. And I thought it was just a really interesting season. And there were some really interesting storylines like Jan with the face crack, not winning anything. That was such an interesting storyline. And it kind of felt a little bit like returning to some of the older seasons of Drag Race. And the queens were not being quite as guarded in what they were saying, which I quite enjoyed because it felt a bit more authentic, which is why I'm putting it in this position. So in fourth position, we have season nine. Season nine has always been one of my favorite seasons and it's one that I tend to re-watch. The first episode with Lady Gaga was such a cool episode and was a really interesting that no one went home and they did the dual runway and I thought it was such a cool idea. There were such memorable moments from the season like Valentina with the mask. I think the reunion for season nine was probably the best reunion there's ever been, or at least one of them. There was so much drama. I thought it was such an interesting way of showing the queens in maybe a different light than how we'd seen them in the season. And of course, let's not forget the finale with the lip sync for the win. They introduced that concept of lip syncing for the crown. And obviously Sasha Velour with the petal moment was iconic and was such an amazing sort of reset of what drag race lip syncs are. It doesn't just have to be tricks and splits and all of those sorts of things. It can also just be something a bit more subtle, but beautiful. And I feel like 
people have tried to now emulate that a lot in the lip syncs and this is where it originated so season nine for me was incredibly entertaining and it goes in this position so now getting into the top three, we have in third position, season four. The reason I love this season so much is because it was really one of the first seasons that was still early enough that it felt very authentic. And I think the queens were not very filtered. They were just saying what they really thought and they weren't necessarily thinking about how they were perceived by the fans and they weren't being guarded like I think some queens are nowadays, which I understand. It still felt a little bit low budget, but there was still a big increase. You could tell in the quality of production from seasons one, two, three, and then four was a big leap in terms of that. There were some really amazing queens. Obviously you had people like Willem got disqualified, the first ever disqualification, which was really interesting and was a massive thing in Drag Race. The top three I thought were all really interesting and Obviously, there's been a lot of controversy about Sharon Needle since then. But if we just look in terms of what she did on the show, she was one of the first kind of spooky queens. And that made it really interesting on the show. And it really represented something different. I also thought season four's Untucked gave us some incredible moments, some of the best Untucked we've ever seen. And so for that, it ranks very high in my list, number three. So in second position, we have season five. Season five has always been one of my favorites. It's such an incredible season. I think the fact that so many of those queens have gone on to be an all-stars just shows you how much of a powerhouse of talent all of those queens were. It was a really interesting season for me because I didn't necessarily see Jinx as being the winner for quite a long time because of the storyline that they were showing that she was this underdog. It really made people rally behind Jinx. And then by the end, I was so happy that she won. She's so incredible. Uh, which she's obviously shown since then on All Stars 7. But I thought that was an amazing storyline to see this underdog that we hadn't seen for quite some time on Drag Race. There was no clear winner. There was also so much drama. I thought Untucked on season five is possibly one of the best Untucked we've ever had. Uh, there were just so many iconic moments. The challenges were really interesting. I really wish they would bring back some of those weird challenges like the Queens Underwater or when they did that lip sync from Untucked thing. That was really cool. Although looking back on it, some of the fashion obviously was a lot less than what it is now it still showed a different side of drag race and fashion and what that can be and in first position in my opinion as you may be able to guess is season six for me i think season six is my favorite because my favorite queen ever probably is it's between bianca del rio and bob the drag queen but i love bianca i thought she had such an amazing run on the show it was she was one of the first real proper comedy queens. I will say one part that obviously is a little bit going against season six is that it was kind of obvious that Bianca was going to win, I think, to most people. But to me, it still didn't actually take away from the enjoyment of the season because I thought Adore would have been an amazing second alternate because she was so beloved by everyone, so authentic. Courtney Act, beautiful, amazing fashion with the wings. That was just incredible. One of the first real stunts that we saw in terms of the fashion. There was people like Laganja with her entrance and everything and the untucked moments. It was just such an incredible season. And I think all of the queens were so talented and it had a mix of Drag Race had really found its footing by that point and it had just come off a high of season five and they managed to continue that success. And they also had an increase in budget and it meant that as a, as a whole, the season was just super entertaining, really interesting. To me, it's always stood out to be my favorite that I keep going back to watch over and over again. So there you go. There was me ranking all of the US regular seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race. Let me know in the comments if you agreed with my ranking. And if you didn't, let me know what your ranking would be and why. Also, I recently got to 90,000 subscribers. So thank you so much. That was so amazing. I'm so honored to have all of you here with me. It still feels like a dream. So please, if you haven't already, just subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I'd love to get to 100K as soon as possible. But thank you all so, so much. It really does mean a lot to me. And it's so humbling to have so many of you that love Drag Race in my channel. So thank you so much.
And I'd like to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon members. You're all incredible and you make it possible to have these videos and for me to keep doing it. So thank you so much for all of your support. And if you'd like to join me over on Patreon to support me in the channel, you'll get amazing benefits like early access to these videos. You'll also get shout outs in my videos. You'll also get priority when submitting questions for interviews as well as loads of other benefits. So please go and check out my Patreon and I'll put a link in the description. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you in a future video. Thank you. Bye.